Hello, my name is Mark Pimentel. I'm a CAM application specialist here at Hawkridge Systems. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can machine an STL file. So STL files are a third-party format used in both the uh, CAM and 3D printing industry for parts that are um, uh, kind of irregular. The, usually they'll be used to reverse engineer parts for the aerospace or automotive industry. Uh, mainly uh, it's an output from a, maybe like a laser scanner or a point scanner. Uh, it is a file format that is not actually designed. It's it's extracted from a physical uh, piece in reality. So what that means is it's, uh, it's a very complex, very, very data heavy file uh, that we try and use in CNC. Um, now, most experts will say that it's a difficult file to use. Uh, it's probably even impossible to machine using certain CAM softwares. But we're going to see in this video how you can pull this off with, uh, with CAMWorks. And the reason we can do that is because of our integration with SOLIDWORKS. So because we have that integration with a CAD software, a very sophisticated CAM software, um, we have the ability to read the file in different ways and use it in different ways as well. So let's take a look at how I've set this up. So I've imported a STL file. Uh, of this lion head. If I just kind of rotate this around, it's a nice little decorative piece. Uh, this was probably laser scanned from maybe a, a sculpture or something. And we'd like to machine that out of a piece of material. Uh, so the first thing to note is that when it was imported, it imported it as a graphic model. So if I just expand this, you'll see that it is actually imported from some sort of STL file, but I imported it only as a graphic solid. Uh, and that is if we go to my settings here, into my import and then file format under STL. I've told it to bring it in as a graphics body. Graphics body, what that refers to is the fact that there's not actually there, uh, there's nothing on the screen. Uh, I'm looking at the STL file represented on screen, but I have nothing to actually click on. Uh, if I were to do any kind of mass properties analysis, I don't think it would show anything either. Uh, it's really just for my visual benefit as the programmer, as the user of the software, but there's no actual services for me to click on. Um, and the reason is because if we were to look at that with shading or with lines, there are many tiny little triangular services. And that's basically how an STL file is read by CAD packages. The data points that were collected through the laser scanning or the data point collection um, the import into a CAD software as many tiny little surfaces. And because of that, if we were to actually translate that into any kind of service model or solid body, as we can see in my options here, these would be very uh, intense models. These would be very heavy data models. Uh, so those would be virtually impossible to use. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to bring it in as a graphics body. Uh, an additional note on this one screen is the units. So if this model, if this real life sculpture was scanned and all those data points were collected using millimeters as the unit of measure, then you want to import them with that same unit of measure. The reason being is if it says something like one millimeters of distance between those data points, and I import that using the inch unit me of measure, um, more of a, uh, um, an imperial uh, unit of measure, uh, then that one translates over to one inch. So I'll have an oversized model. And that is a, a common uh, complaint we get on the tech support side where uh, people using STLs have brought them in, and they are either oversized or undersized because of the unit of measure. So keep that in mind. But graphics body is what we're gonna use here because as you can see, there's nothing for me to click on. I can't click on any of those individual surfaces. So uh, it makes it easier for me to look at it, rotate it around, but it's still useful on the cam side. We're gonna see that. Um, now, another thing I've added to this model is I've added a additional surface on the bottom, a very basic surface. I basically just extruded um, or, or formed a, uh, an elliptical surface there. It's literally just the surface, and that will come into play later when we take a look at how the, um, uh, the tool paths work. Now, on the cam side, in my CamWorks feature manager, uh, my stock definition, I actually took advantage of the fact that we're looking at a graphics model and I just drew in this block for my, my stock, but you could easily do all the other stock definitions here as well. Again, you don't really have a model on screen, so you can't use the bounding box, but you can draw sketches and extrude them and such as well. But what we're going to see here, specific to the, S the use of STLs, is how we can define it as a multi-surface feature. So if I just take a look at the one I've already defined. I essentially chose my STL file as one of my feature type options and then browse to that file. 
When you browse that file, again, keep in, keep in mind the uh, units of measure. And usually STLs, they come in at different coordinate systems as well. So that can be another stumbling block. So just make sure that you, if it does come in with any kind of coordinate system, you take that into, uh, into account. If it does come in in a weird way, you have all of SOLIDWORKS capabilities there to sketch and do planes and all that kind of stuff to bring it into where you need it to be. Because again, we are programming off of an original imported part file, but that doesn't mean we have to use the SOLIDWORKS coordinate system. Once we get going on this, once we've designed our stock and whatnot, we can just start using whatever coordinate system we want. So I mentioned before that in addition to that STL file, I actually created another surface. So I've just made another multi-surface feature there. The STL based multi-surface feature, I just made copies of it across my different mill part setups. I will be doing not only 3D work, but I'll be doing three plus two work with this model as well and some five axis simultaneous. So by using that STL based uh, multi-surface feature, I can do that on all my different features here uh, because again, I'm just selecting the STL. So I just literally just clicked on my first multi-service feature, held the control key, and then just copied it to the various mill part setups for use in those different mill part setups. On the operation side, those features turn into my area clearance. Now you can see that the first one, it's kind of a jumbled mess because I'm doing the entire block. So let's take a look at it from the index sides. And I can index to that STL from all the different sides. And I actually am using my rest option there as well. You can see that I'm trimming the toolpath based off the remaining material, but it still works off that STL. So we have the same ability to machine with surfaces, but based off an STL file. If we go all the way down to my Z level, you can see that I have a Z level 3D toolpath here, but because of the prismatic limitation of that toolpath, uh, I can't get around the chin of this lion. So that brings me to the first of the five axis uses of an STL file. Now this is not necessarily of an STL file, but this will be very helpful when you're working with STL files and your 3D toolpaths. And that is in the advanced section, there's a holder avoidance uh, option that is often used, but we're looking at this from a five axis point of view. If I just click on convert to five axis, what I get now is the holder avoidance with some five axis capability. So let's take a look at this in the side view. And if I run through this, we'll see as the tool goes through, it is very simply just a, a regular 3D tool path. But as it gets closer down to the bottom, you can see that it begins to tilt. Now I've given it an exaggerated uh, holder clearance here to, to illustrate the fact that it is going to tilt. So this is the first of the five axis capabilities. Uh, you get this with your regular th uh, 3D based tool paths in CamWorks, but I'm showing here that we're using an STL file and it works here as well. So you get this ability here and you most often will use this with this sort of uh, operation as well because with STLs, they do tend to have different angles that are required and this irregular shape. But we'll take it even further and we'll take a look at how we're gonna use this in five axis as well. If I open up my multi-axis mill toolpath, I have this set to just a simple slicing pattern as you can see on screen in the orange. And what I'm doing here is I've defined that additional surface. So the, the feature we're actually machining here is that additional surface. It's not the STL, it's the uh, elliptical surface that I created on the bottom. And the reason I'm making a very simple surface is I really just need that for my axis control. So if you're familiar with the multi-axis mill toolpath, I'm just telling it to stay normal to that elliptical surface. If I were to just generate this simply off of that toolpath, off of that surface, I would get a nice clean looking toolpath. What I'm doing here with the STL is in the gouge checking section. I'm essentially pulling the tool away if I'm gouging that surface. So if we, again, under other surfaces, I've chosen my multi-surface feature based off that STL. So in the generation of a regular tool path on that elliptical surface, but gouge checking against the STL, I essentially get the STL tool path. STL based tool path there. You can see it's following the surfaces of the lion's face. Um, even further, we have the ability here to do indexed 3D toolpaths. And you can see here that I'm also doing the nose of the lion, again, based off of just the STL. So you have the ability here to use an STL file as a multi-surface feature for your toolpaths, both for three axis, three plus two, and multi-surface, multi-axis. 
Any questions on this, just give us a call at the main tech line found on our website. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.